As content creators, it's really hard to tell sometimes if we're making any sort of progress. So Bronte and I just today got our new Nespresso machine that we ordered on Black Friday. This thing is so legit, it's sick, it's in matte black, but more importantly, it is a huge upgrade from our Keurig coffee, which was just awful. It was more like, just like, I don't know, injecting caffeine, and you just had to drink it down really fast. That's basically what we use our Keurig for, but this Nespresso machine makes actually good coffee and espresso shots, so it's enjoyable to drink and I'm so happy with this thing. Definitely a great come up for Black Friday. Very, very happy with it. Anyway, back to what I was saying. As content creators, sometimes it's just one of those things of where you're just so heads down in the grind and especially with something like YouTube videos, you're just constantly working on whatever video you have in front of you. The second it's done, you're already on to the next and you kind of forget about your previous work and it's just that cycle over and over and over for months on end without you even thinking to look back at any of your previous work. And because of that cycle, sometimes it's really hard to remind ourselves to pop our heads back up and look back at our previous work to remind ourselves that we're actually making good progress with our content because if you don't really take time to reflect you kind of can't really see the progress you're making day to day. So recently I was in one of these slumps, if you will, myself, where I was feeling like I just wasn't making any sort of progress in my streaming or in my YouTube videos. And it wasn't until I looked back at some of my previous videos from earlier this year that I realized, dang, it's kind of hard to watch these videos now. It's almost cringy to me because I know I'm so much better than where I was even six months ago. And one video in particular that is actually my most popular video, we're almost at 100,000 views on it, which is just absolutely insane to me. But it is my streaming video about how to set up your Sony camera. Since then, I've actually made a few updates to my stream settings and I wish I could almost go back in that video and like add some supplementary content to it, but I guess that's what I'm gonna do in this video. So first things first, I still stand by that Sony camera streaming video, which if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll have the link posted down in the description below. And when I was making that video, I was making it for the average person who wasn't necessarily proficient in how to use their cameras. I just wanted something that was easy to follow along to, something that you could just make a few tweaks to your camera and have a much better image coming out of your camera. But I did make that video a handful of months ago now and I myself have improved on how proficient I am with camera technology and so therefore I have tweaked some of my settings in my own streaming camera to help enhance my image and make it that much better. So again, I still stand by all the information on that video. You can still use that video and apply all the settings to yourself, but I've made a couple of tweaks that I think is more like additions to that video, not necessarily correcting that video. Since that video came out, the one issue that I was still running into for my live streams was sometimes I would watch back my VODs and notice that my face would either be completely blown out still or way too saturated and it was never where it should be. Now the first thing that came to mind to me was in that original video, I suggested that you use auto ISO so that way if there's any sort of lighting fluctuations in your room day to day, your camera would auto adjust to it. And for most people, I still stand by that suggestion. But if you are a little more advanced and you have a controlled lighting environment like I do where I keep my blinds closed, I have the same lights on every single stream at the same brightness, it's not gonna change for me. I did end up personally setting my ISO to manual and therefore every single exposure setting in the camera is now at manual settings. So I was hoping that that issue of my face either being overexposed or way too saturated would go away, but unfortunately, setting my ISO to manual did not solve that problem for me. So it wasn't until recently that I discovered the reason that I was still running into this issue was because of a setting called DRO. Most Sony cameras have DRO on auto by default, 
and it stands for Dynamic Range Optimizer. And what it's trying to do is kind of do like post-processing on what it's seeing to help expose the image of where it thinks things should be. And sometimes it works really, really well, but other times it does not work so well, especially for something of where I have a different lighting source in my face, constantly rapidly changing, like when I'm streaming and gaming. And so sometimes it gets thrown off and it will completely ruin the image. So it wasn't until recently that I discovered that that auto setting was just really throwing things off. So now what I do on my own setup, I set it to level one for DRO. And what that does is it kind of pulls it back a bit. It still has dynamic range optimization going, but just not nearly as strong on level one. And so what's nice about this is if I move closer or further away from my lighting sources, it will still kind of help adjust just ever so slightly, but it's not gonna make a huge difference. So as a result from that, I noticed that my face was more often than not being exposed properly, but now all of a sudden my camera was looking way too saturated. So I had to go back into my creative style custom settings that I suggested originally. And now my custom settings for that creative style look is now still on the standard one, but now it is plus one for contrast, plus one for saturation, and actually zero for sharpening. One weird thing about Sony cameras that most people don't know is when your sharpening is at zero, it is actually still doing a decent amount of image sharpening. So anything more than that, it can really start to over sharpen your image. Now in my original video, I suggested that you use plus one for sharpening and it looked good when you are full screen for live streaming. But when you put your image down really small and you are like having something else up on the screen, like your video game that you are streaming, you can really notice the over sharpening happening. So I've bumped mine back down to zero for sharpening. And so those are my updated custom creative style settings now. So to briefly sum that up, I now use a manual ISO and I use DRO on level one and I use that creative style on the standard at plus one for contrast, plus one for saturation and zero for sharpening. Also, since that original Sony camera stream setup video, I have changed some of my settings in OBS, which I think would be really helpful to you guys for those of you that stream using OBS. So let me share some of these secrets that I have found out over these last couple of months. If you stream to Twitch, you probably know this battle all too well, but it is that constant struggle between your resolution versus your bit rate. A lot of people stream at 1080p to Twitch, but the limit for the majority of people is at 6,000 kilobits a second, which really is not enough for 1080p streams. You can push it to 8,000, but for most people, you probably won't end up getting transcoding, which is a huge, huge deal if you don't get transcoding, especially as like a Twitch affiliate or lower. And therefore, most people should still stream at 6,000 kilobits a second, but at that bit rate, you really cannot stream at 1080p. Your image just looks too blurry if there's any sort of motion. So a lot of people suggest 720p, but then your image is kind of soft and it doesn't look as nice. So there are some options in between 720 and 1080p, and the majority of people choose 900p. First thing I wanna say about that is do not stream at 900p. I'm not a complete expert on the technical reasons behind this, but from my understanding of the way that Twitch wants a video to come in, the resolution needs to be a good divisible number by eight. And when you stream at 900p, it's not a good divisible number by eight. And therefore, Twitch is going to take some of the pixels from your stream and just discard them. And so essentially why that's bad is you are wasting your bit rate on pixels that aren't going to make it to your stream. So. Therefore, what you should do, you should stream at a better resolution of either 864p or 936p, which are divisible numbers by eight. So I personally like to stream at 936p. Therefore, it's like the best balance of sharpness versus I can still have high motion games and it won't completely ruin my image. And now the other main big thing that I have changed in OBS since that original video is actually my recording settings while I am streaming. For the longest time, I just recorded using the same exact settings as I was using for streaming. 
And when you're making YouTube videos of your previous live streams, you'll notice that the video quality really is not the best. It's okay for live streaming because everyone puts up with it being a live stream. But if you go to watch a YouTube video and it's really blurry, it just is not a great experience. And so recently I've been seeing some streamers even move to three PC setups, one for gaming, one for streaming, one for recording. And it just seems like such a hassle to get good recordings. And originally I thought, oh, that third PC just for recording so you can have crazy high quality recording sounds like a good idea. But then I got to thinking there has to be some better way to have high quality recordings while you're live streaming than to have to build a third PC altogether. That just seemed so ridiculous to me. And I don't know if I was out of the loop on this or what, or if it's because I use NVENC to stream, but recently I was digging around in OBS and realized that I didn't have to record at the same quality that I stream at. So I dug around my settings and I realized, wait, I can have really good high quality recordings at the same time of me live streaming with NVENC. And I do still recommend for the majority of people, you only need one PC, just get a newer NVIDIA graphics cards that have the newer NVENC on it. It really does look absolutely amazing. It competes with really high end CPUs. Seriously, they're the best. Anyway, I did go in and change my recording settings so they are extremely high quality. And so now on the encoder, I changed it from use stream settings to NVENC and I use CQP at 22. Now these recordings are going to still be compressed, but they're going to look significantly better than what you see on Twitch itself. But in order for me to accommodate this high quality of recording, I needed to end up getting a second SSD for my computer that I only use for these recordings. So while I'm streaming, I'm constantly having it also record to a second SSD. And as a result, I have these huge massive files, but the quality on them is so much better, especially if you are going to be editing your footage and uploading it to YouTube. It makes such a huge difference. I highly, highly recommend it. All right, that's enough stream talk for now. Let's go see what Bronte has been up to. I need to make some dinner. I guess we need to make some dinner. I'm starving. I was just in there talking for a while. It probably only looked like I was talking for a couple minutes of what you guys saw, but in reality, I had to do so many takes, blah, blah. Anyway, Bronte, what have you been up to? Um, this is the perfect summary of my personality. <laughs> I'm doing a puzzle while watching a stream. <laughs> Classic. Who are you watching? Ray, of course. It's really funny, Valkyrie has been one of my absolute favorite streamers for many years now. And now I have Bronte hooked on Ray as well. Also, we finally put up our Christmas tree. I absolutely love this thing. I've always been a real tree type of person myself, but last year we did go ahead and buy a fake tree because Bronte and I always struggle with, do we put up white lights on the tree or colored lights? I'm a colored lights type of person but she is a white lights type of person. And so originally we were alternating years of who would get what color on the tree. But then we saw this tree. You can change the colors on this tree from white to color and back and forth and also has the setting. I really like this tree. I'm happy with it. Anyway, that is going to do it for this video. I am working on some other camera related videos specifically to improve your camera quality for making YouTube videos. So be sure to comment down below what type of info you would like to hear about improving your camera's quality when making YouTube videos. But that is going to do it for today and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.